Alrighty, I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. The time is 6.30 p.m. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of November 27th. I motion we approve minutes of November 27th. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All right, first up on new business, uh, we are shipping past the sewer relining. That is going to be for another day. Um, and we're going to wait on the conservation um, discussion for later on also today. Uh, so let's go to class two and non-alcohol comic common Vic licenses. Yes. Okay. So we have two applicants for class two um, license renewals, um, Allstate's material group and JR service. So I figure maybe make a motion on class two and then we'll do common Vic separately. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the two class two licenses that we are. All right. I, am, I motion we approve the two class two licenses for Allstate and JR, or JR, service. JR service. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you. All right, and I would also entertain a motion, or actually, do you want to tell us about the, yep. the non-alcohol so, ones? Um, the, these are the common VIC licenses for establishments that don't serve alcohol. We'll do the alcohol ones next week. So there's the Bench and Korean Deli, Dunkin' Donuts, Frontier Pizza, Mike's Maze, Millstone Market, Simorowski Farm Stand, Sugarloaf Frosty, and Wild Roots Cafe and Market. They so turned right. everything in, um, all the... Uh, checks and, and paperwork and stuff is all good. So, all right. Any discussion? No. no. Not hearing any discussion. I would entertain a motion to approve the common Vic licenses as listed by Jeff. So moved. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. All righty. Thank you. Next up, we have a discussion of NVP grant application for dirt road improvements. Yeah, so uh, I had a discussion with the chair of the Conservation Commission last week about, hi, um, about the mountain roads, the dirt mountain roads and the erosion, especially the last year with all the rainfall that we've been having. Um, so we talked about potentially applying for a municipal vulnerability preparedness plan uh, grant. I reached out to the a representative who suggested because we don't have actual plans and it hasn't been permitted yet, we apply for a planning and permitting grant. Um, the expression of interest is due in like 10 days. So I just wanted to bring that up, see if you had any questions. Basically, we would be applying if we got the grant, the funds would be used to say, okay, we're, um, I think it's... North Mountain and Middle Mountain? Are those the two roads we were talking about? North Mountain. Uh, they're all. Yeah. <laughs> reservoir Road is the one that leads to the drink, emergency drinking water reservoir. That's, yeah. That, that would that be a higher priority, I would think. Um, so that that's, doesn't fill up with sand and gravel from the road. Um, Middle Mountain Road has an issue. Cross Mountain Road has an issue. Um, so maybe it should be an evaluation and plan design for the, the whole mountain? Uh, I think that's unrealistic. Okay. <laughs> how much are they, how much do they go up to, they go up to a fair amount of money. Is it yeah. for the planning? I think so. For the implementation? I don't, I don't know. The well, they, 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 they take on decent sized projects, I know that. Yeah. I don't remember the number off the top of my head, yeah. The, the goal would be to not only have them come up with a design and a plan for whichever roads we decide to work on first, but also to provide a maintenance plan so that we understand how frequently we need to drag the roads or um, you know, flatten them again or look at the culprits or whatever, but basically have a, a plan to help us make sure that we don't get to the same state of disrepair that they're in now. 
And would part of that be helping us determine which of the property of the roads are the most vital to do work on, or would that be more up to the committee and us to talk about and decide? Yeah, I think that they would. We would probably want to make recommendations to the select board based on input from the conservation commission, the highway superintendent, the fire chief. Um, yeah, as far as prioritizing the roads, and then we would probably ask for everything. <laughs> See what they yeah. give us. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and do you need a vote on that, or did you just need our... <laughs> no, I just wanted to let you know that I was planning on applying, making sure that you didn't have any strong objections to that plan. I am always a fan of bringing state money in to help <laughs> yeah. pay for town things. That Excellent. is I, always, I, always a, a plus in my book. I would encourage, if there's any way we could put in there, somewhere to find us, you know, encourage us to find ways to put the put more into the ground. I don't know what the soils are like out there. but Water into the ground? Into yeah. the ground. So, you know, any, any way to kind of slow things down as it comes down and find ways to get in the ground. They, they love that kind of stuff. There are sections that are down to the bedrock or down to the yeah, so there's base probably, layer of chunky rock. Yeah, there's probably not a lot of opportunity. <laughs> no. That's all I had. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then let's go back to the conservation restriction on Middle Mountain Road property since you're here. Okay. Um, <laughs> take it away. Yeah, so we're always happy when we have willing sellers. <laughs> so this is a, a parcel on Mill Mountain Road that's about seven acres. It's in core habitat on the biomap. It's on um, priority habitat on the other map. Um, it is forest. It's a far, surrounded by forest. It's an open field that's currently hayed by the family that owns it. They'd like to continue doing that. So our our the conservation commission already authorized to use our conservation trust fund money which to pay for the purchase which is sixteen thousand dollars we already did the appraisal to get to that number um, an independent appraisal of that value and the i don't have a sample of a conservation restriction that would include this revocable license for the family to continue paying it until they don't want to hate it anymore, and then it will just go back to the town um, if we wanted to keep hanging it. The Conservation Commission, it, I, have, I have this map so you can see where it is. So it's this rectangle up there off the Middle Mountain Road. What doesn't show on the map is that there's a dirt road that comes, uh, so it looks like it dead ends there on the map, but mm -hmm. it keeps coming up, goes through the field, and then it's someone else's private property and you it has been a trail that people use to connect over to the town park and then so you have this whole loop that you can you can do through okay. then come back out on the roads um, so our interests are for the wildlife habitat also to keep that edge habitat open mm -hmm. and have it behave we want that to continue we don't want it to be developed obviously yep. um, and having it hay keeps that open habitat and the edge that our area and the state is, is losing for those, those species like deer and turkey and other birds that like those edges that they don't get so those other habitats. You said that that dirt road continues into it, but is that like a legal right away to it? Yes. It's a, a legal easement, so it's not as landlocked as it looks? Right, and there is another piece that connects to North Silver Lane, the paved road below that could have an access to that property through someone else's property. But that's a legal, current legal easement to it? No, I mean, they would have to buy something off of the neighbors down there to, to come up to the... So right now, the only way that... I, I just want to make sure I, I totally understand it. The only way to legally access that property is the continuation of this dirt road, right. but it is an established right. legal easement to it. Yeah, and that section hasn't eroded. <laughs> There's another section. Yeah. Over there it has. So the upside for town is another plot in conservation that can't be developed, um, and also the added benefit of it being a important habitat for those edge animals, as you said. Um, and you said 16,000 was the, right. the price? Okay. 
I have, I have no idea what the what the normal concert is that. Yeah, they go to appraisal. They, they, it's, it's a little bit of science and art, I think, when people mm -hmm. do an appraisal, but they're looking at what similar size parcels that are wooded or open fields that don't have this paved access to it, and what those have sold yes. in the area for. So it's okay. comparable to the way the market is. Um, and the right to hay it would be reserved for that family. It wouldn't right. pass on to, I mean, like if, if the children want to, the grandchildren, that kind of thing, that's, is there a yeah, I think it would time limit on that or? For the family, and we could decide if we want to have a time limit on it or have it renewed every five years or so or something mm -hmm. like that. But there's active family interest. I don't know, maybe the children of the current. Not sure. Okay, that's fair. They're young now. Yeah, I mean, if, if the haying is also good for the the environment, at, you know, for, for the the animals who use that kind of environment, um, I'm all for continuing to have it be hayed if that's a, a win for everybody. You know, if farmers get some hay out of it and we also make a better habitat for animals, you know, win win. Um, do you need anything from us at this point, or is this more of just though? Wanted to give you a heads up. Um, Both heads up, and then. Um, as the town entity on the purchasing property, you have to approve it, I guess, so in the end. Okay. And the, the Conservation Commission would hold the conservation restriction, right? Yeah, right. And then just a last question. How much money does the Conservation Trust have left after this purchase? Good question. Um, I don't have that off the top of my head. There's tens of thousands. Yeah, I was going to say it's like 70, 60. Okay. Only not properties like this. Okay. Um, so there is some. Yeah, and I just I wanted people to be aware that this wasn't all of the money the Conservation Trust had to conserve property. Okay. Um, just out of curiosity, do you know what other plots around are in conservation currently, or is just the first one in that general area of the, the map? And that map, it's just that. And then it's people's woodlots that are past once. You, this is all cliff. That orangey section is yep. another um, wildlife habitat that we appreciate on the Mount Toby foothills. Yep. And so once you get past that, it's woodlots and gets forested okay. periodically. Um, and do we know if any of these budding lots are being hayed also, or is that just the only one that is? That's the only one. There is the only one. There. Okay. Well, it's the neighbor here next door has more grass and gardens mm. in there, okay. so it is a little continuation of the open, but it's a little more manicured. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the additional context. Not, it's not actually part of our decision. I'm just curious. <laughs> All right. Um, a motion to approve or a motion to what do you want a motion to say? I mean, I, I think at this point, you probably just want to raise any concerns that you have, and then we could vote to sign the conservation restrict, right? That's what we would do when, when we have it. have it. Yeah. So I don't have any concerns. Any concerns? Do you okay. want to have a motion to support, support moving forward? At this time, I would uh, entertain a motion to support moving forward with the Put purchase of the conservation rights for the parcel in question. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three nothing. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. We appreciate it. And I'm excited about that. That's. Can I miss the no, it's Next postponed. Week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to talk to you at some point. Okay. All right. So next up, we have discussion of 23 Plum Tree property. Yes. So <coughs> 23 Plum Tree is the former Sinauer property, Oxford University Press most recently. It's um, on the market for, I think it's $1.95 million. Um, it's about 12, 13,000 square feet, 1,000 square feet. Um, and we've been looking at it as a, a, to potentially buy for the town. And the thinking was that it could serve as a location for the South County Senior Center. Um, 
and it's more than big enough to serve. So it could also serve another purpose, um, either move municipal offices there and find something to do with this building or, you know, make it more of a community center with youth activities or something like that. Um, I wanted to raise it, I guess, to start the discussion because, I mean, we don't have $2 million. We got an appraisal. Um, the appraisal was about $1.8 so we're in the ballpark of, of being able to put in what I think would be a competitive offer, um, but it would require a debt exclusion, um, and it we we just did an override last year of two hundred seventy five thousand, a debt exclusion of one point eight million would be about a three dollar increase to the tax rate, um, which equates to about a thousand dollars a year for the average tax bill uh, for homes assessed at $358,000. So I, I wanted to raise it because it's not an insignificant amount. Um, we already talked about health insurance on the budget. We, we've talked about the elementary school poss possibly needing a new roof. Um, the fire chief has mentioned that in the next five to ten years we're going to need a new fire truck talked about last year how expensive ambulances are um i i think we want to take careful consideration i, I don't think anybody would deny that would be a wonderful senior center and um be a great use of that building uh, but I wanted to at least raise the, the financial implications and how that may impact our ability to fund things in the future. So a couple questions on that front. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is, um, I remember there being some discussion one of the last times we talked about this, about there being um, a grant that we could potentially apply for if the senior center is going to be there, and as long as that's part of the, the process, is that still something that we think could be a thing? Yeah, we're certainly going to explore um, every possibility. We did the appraisal so that we, if we can get federal funds, so we'll talk to our, our elected officials about federal grants. Um, there, we already got a grant, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. Um, I think it was a hundred thousand dollars that can, I believe, that would be able to be used to modify the building. Mm -hmm. um, but those funds would have to be spent by January, uh, June 30th. So um, there was also discussion, uh, not here, but elsewhere about, you know, how quickly can we do this? Do we want to have a special town meeting in Sunderland to approve the funds to do this? That's also an option. Um, I, I didn't think we could move that quickly, but now that we have the appraisal, um, I've started talking to council. Um, so I, I wanted to raise, I guess, uh, I want to put everything out there on the table so you could have an informed discussion and let me know how, how I can help move the process forward. Now for debt exclusion, is that is that a loan that we're taking with a certain period on it? So or are we talking about just we want to buy the whole property and we're going to need to... So, uh, yeah. No. So the debt exclusion is raising taxes for a specific purpose for a specific period of time. So if we took out, say, a $1.8 million mortgage on the property, um, the debt exclusion would be the amount that we need to raise every year to pay back principal and interest on that. Okay. And did you, did you, the numbers you gave us, do you know what term that was for that? And also that, that's um, that was just no um, that that was I believe that would be a thirty year term and that's that's one point eight million which is sorry where was I going with that um, sorry I lost my train of thought. Um, well, we were talking about. 
I'm gonna try to make the, the numbers make sense. And you're saying it's about a thousand dollars per per house in Sunderland, which adds up to a lot of money per year, uh, right. more than I would think no. that you'd be paying on a one point eight million dollar mortgage. Not closing costs. Um, so I was wondering whether that was the first year or the first couple of years it was going to be more, and then after that be less. If it's going to be a thousand dollars per person per household in Sunderland for thirty years, that's a sorry. So so we haven't even looked into the the rate of borrowing yet. So the 1.8, you know, probably increase that by 5% because we're going to have a 5% interest rate or whatever that we're going to have to pay back. So no, it would, it would be 30 years, um, but we don't know exactly what that amount would be. Okay. So we will do some more number crunching and we can look at that later then. Although, you know what, now that, now that I'm looking at this, I may have done it wrong. I feel like what happened is you did it as though it was a five year or maybe even just a trying to absorb 1.8 within the year. I think year, that's what I did. Which sounded scary. And that <laughs> yeah. would be, I mean, that would be a lot of money for the whole town to come up within a year, yeah. but we wouldn't be a 30 year yeah. lease. If that was a 30 year mortgage I on think, that, that would be I think a little that's scary. What, I think, yeah, I think that's what I did. So if we assume that means that the, the, the a 30 year would bring that down by a factor of 10 probably yeah. and, and the rent will come in from and, the right right and then yeah. you have yeah. rent coming in yeah. and so that was that was but then was, you have increased insurance yes yeah. yeah so you know, maintenance costs yep yeah yeah okay so it's not as scary as i thought no so my next <laughs> my next line of questioning has to do with the senior center i know they've already their board has already expressed support for this project i would assume that the goal would be to charge a profit neutral amount of money to the senior center to cover the cost the town incurs running the senior center and paying for the senior center and things like that. Do we know what their budget is for that? Do we know whether if we buy this property, they're going to be able to afford it? Honestly, that's sort of a, and I know they is us, but I don't know if they it's still. Yeah. So, um, I'll, before getting into that, I'll add that the Deerfield Select Board and Board of Health um, also sent a letter of support, which I got today, yep. saying that they were in support of um having the senior center and understanding that there would be rent paid i believe that the senior center was thinking about they could afford about four thousand yeah, dollars a month yeah. um, and that's utilities everything included that's uh right. all right. inclusive right. no right. additional lawn mowing shoveling snow plowing sanding and salting right, right. that's yeah. bottom line yep and so if we're talking 1.8 million dollar 30-year mortgage at six percent or something like that what's that like fifteen thousand a year ish maybe eighteen twenty thousand somewhere in that general area so oh yeah okay yeah because we're paying the sire truck over five years which is why it's a hundred yeah um, so I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what the, what the, what the, the math looks like in terms of, you know, right. and if we're talking, they're able to pay 4000 a month for rent, right. that's 48 a year. That covers the mortgage plus a chunk. And I'm not, not saying we necessarily charge them the, the, the you know, more than they, than we need. But when you do add in the things like the, the, the plowing and the other expenses, okay. I feel like we're in ballpark of that being doable. Yeah, but I mean, again, I get we don't even know what the electric bill there would be a month, right? Yeah. Um, we have a, a I, I got a couple. Of okay, so you do yeah, have I started to do that, yeah. Right, so, but when it was fully occupied versus right, yeah. right now when it's, hasn't been occupied for what, close to a year or, well, no. They pretty much left Pre occupancy of that at COVID. So we need some way further back look at utilities because again it's a big building yeah. and if if there's four thousand dollars a month of electric and heat and maintenance we're, we're really yeah. kind of getting yeah. and then what? the other thing to think about is if there's more than one tenant how you know how do you pay for the common areas that you know if the senior center has three quarters of the building and town offices of the other quarter or some other tenant has another quarter how do you you know how do you pay for the snow plowing and the grass cutting like yeah yeah i mean right. we would 
figure have to figure all of that right. out. But. Right. But I'm just saying if if the budget for senior center and you know it's easier to use round numbers, right? Is four thousand all inclusive and we find out that insurance, utilities, maintenance of the property is already over four thousand dollars a month. That changes who who we need to look at for a tenant there, right? Yep. For you know, for possibly the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know, looking at this right. building. This building. What does this building cost us? And yeah. Exactly. Yep. Right. But it's paid off, so there's no mortgage. But right. You know, is it less energy efficient? Correct. I mean, there, there's a lot of beautiful things about that building. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know. So yeah, if you could. Yes. Sorry, please. I don't, I don't want to put a wrench in the conversation. <laughs> I'm just curious if other buildings have been. I'm excited that this senior center would be in Sutherland. Yeah, I think. Other things I don't want to take away from the south part of town. Just like picture a sidewalk or easier access to the buildings in your center. There's a bus stop nearby. There is a bus stop there. Yeah, they put one in when they put the apartment complex in. It's on 116, though. Yeah. yeah. So they'd have to walk along Plum Tree without a, without a sidewalk. Right. right. Or, you know, we, we've discussed it. You know, and again, you have to actually look into the full. The back end of that park property abuts into 116 flats. Right. So whether they could change that, but, you know, we don't know until we ask. But, you know, that would be a consideration of seeing if the bus could actually drop them off in there and access the building through a back sidewalk. It's kind of like right near where the dog park and stuff is okay. at 116 bucks. And it, it may solve, you know, and again, we don't know until yeah. we got further in that discussion. I personally would love to see the whole bus stop moved in there and take it off of 116. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, that's, we want safer that way all around. I just think it's safer. That That's a tough one in, at nighttime in the dark and stuff. Um, there is a light there, but someone has to actually push the button to use the light and not try to run across the road all dressed in black yep. at 9 p.m. in the dead of winter. So, Jeff, I would love to try to get as good of a picture as we can for what the expenses are going to look like. Um, similar town buildings or maybe, you know, talk to Deerfield and see, like, what, what does... Of a building that's in Deerfield of a similar size cost to heat and maintain and whatnot. Um, so we can have a, a good idea of what the bottom line of the town is going to be. Um, I mean, there are very few buildings in town like this. It's, we aren't a town that has lots and lots and lots of large commercial spaces. And so this is yeah. sort of a unique opportunity that I don't want to just see pass without having us do as much as we can to see if it's right for the town. Um, it would certainly would be great to have the senior center there. Personally, I would love to see there be an actual community center, you know, have it continue from seniors into, as you were saying, a place where youth can hang out and, you know, people can have yoga classes and things like that. You know, we don't have that kind of thing in, in Sunderland currently. And it, it's, you know, I remember very recently we got feedback from someone saying that one of the things that, the, that young people don't have in Sunderland is the ability to go hang out somewhere. You know, because we don't have a lot of like, coffee shops or things like that. So I, mean, I think there's a lot of potential in the building. I think there's a, um, obviously some financial questions, but, you know. I mean, you know, we were never, and Jeff probably knows way more about the true particulars of it and stuff, but, you know, during the pandemic and stuff, we didn't have place in town where we could give vaccines and stuff because we didn't have a building where you could enter one door 
have your water source, things like that, and exit another door so people, but the way that building is, you have that potential. There's multiple bathrooms, multiple water sources, multiple entrances and exits, you know, again, well, it's, you know, pandemic's over, done with it. Hopefully we never deal with another one in our life, but we don't know. But the, the, you yeah, there is, and we had also discussed having like a town nurse, possibly sharing a town nurse with Deerfield and the other South County towns. It would be great for that person to be able to have a location where they could do flu clinics or whatever they're doing. Um, so, you know, it, and even things like the recreation coordinator, it'd be great for recreation coordinator to have a, a space to be able to, you know, not just be <laughs> working out of all the different sheds in town. Um, there's a lot of different things about this that could open a lot of doors. So. I certainly want to. I mean, heating and cooling centers and, you know, you know, extreme weather. And, you know, whether we used that or that became, again, we have to look at what could we potentially do with this building, too. If, if the decision was made to move town offices there, can we turn this, what can we do with this building? Yeah. Um, you know, things that wouldn't necessarily disrupt other buildings be able to leave you know them still intact and and the library still run a library but now we would potentially have a, a better space for a heating and cooling center yep. that wouldn't impact the library's daily operations or the school's daily operations or other places we're using for that right now well even things like voting right you know, it would be another location where if you wanted to move the voting from the library there, we could do that, and that would be... A well, depending, on, on, right, library, depending you know? on the setup that we chose yeah. or what what the use of that building we chose versus what the use of this build, you know, yeah. taking into account, you know, some different scenarios there. So I think um, one of the things that I talked to the senior center about as far as next steps is... Um, getting a space designer in there to look at the space and say, yes, you could have a senior center and offices, or this is how much extra space you have, we think. Um, I believe that the senior center has funds to do the senior center portion of it. Do we want to contribute funds to see if the town offices or what, else could be moved there so i i think yes but i think um, have you been through the building dan i have not okay i think and again it's my opinion i think prior to doing that we'd have to come up with some type of square footage that we would be willing to say senior center, right? And and again, no, this, I highly doubt the senior center is going to do this. But we wouldn't want to see the senior center come back with a 10,000 square foot plan and only not be using 2,000 feet of it, right? We would want to say, you know, because they have to say, okay, you know, maybe half of the building or you know what i mean six thousand square feet senior center six thousand square feet split right but the challenge i think is that a space designer would look at a space this size and say during the day that could be a senior center exercise room and in the evenings the select board could have their meetings there so like that shared space doesn't have to, you know get even right. divided which I right know the, but yeah Right. What so, is their need what is their dedicated about? space, right? Because they're going to need space for activity rooms, things like that, that they don't want as a shared common space. I would assume they'd be moving their offices there as well, because that's sort of the, the whole goal. Right. So they would, right. yeah, they, they would definitely have some parts that are solely used by them, and it'd be good to nail that down before we get further in. You know, and I mean, we don't have to do it to the exact inch, but you know, I mean, if they say we need roughly 3,000 square feet of dedicated space, locked doors, hours, hmm. versus we can have another 4,000 square foot of, you know, auditorium, exercise, 
multi-use rooms that town, you know, we just need, and again, nothing exact, but we need something to kind of. Yeah, it would be good to have a general idea of, from the South County um, oversight, whether or not they, they can tell us, oh yeah, if we were looking for a building today, we'd be looking for a 6,000 square foot building or something like that. Or like, you know, if we had a bunch of options available, this is the size we're looking for. If we could kind of get a general feel for that, that would help. I've heard Jennifer say that ideally she would like 10,000 square feet, mm -hmm. but that's also for the future. But, um, which is another advantage of this space, right? Is if town offices grow or the senior center grows, you just move What's into the total, other space. What's the total size? What's the total size? Uh, I think it's about 13,000. Close to 13, just on there. So they take up most of it. And right, but how, if, if 10,000 square feet, but half of it could be shared, shared space, space, that's very different than 10,000 right. dedicated square feet. Right. Because yeah, if they have like five offices and stuff, five shared, and then we have three for town stuff, that might be fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, the other thing that I think is worth keeping in mind is just the timing, which a, a debt exclusion, we're going to have to go to the polls too, so I think that we're talking you know, early March is the latest to get a question on the ballot. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we need to make sure that we're confident in what we're doing at that point. So I guess um, I, I just wanted to put that date out in your minds, but yep. it, so we can and keep each other And there's nothing that says tomorrow they're not going to get an offer for... Yep. Two and a half. And then we can go, yeah. okay then, have a great day. <laughs> yeah. And we just went, well, that was a nice dream. Yeah. Um, you know, because obviously we can't go. And we can't get in a bidding war if somebody else decided they wanted that piece of property. And remind us what our limitations are in terms of the appraised value. We can only go a certain amount. I think plus or minus. Up to that amount. Up, up to, to that amount. So we can't go over the appraised amount. Okay. So let's nail down what we think the effect would be on the average tax bill. And yeah, yeah, I'll details. redo those numbers that are very wrong. Well, and then that's and that's if we aren't recuperating any of that money from, you know, potential tenants in the right. building, right? If, if we do have the senior center there and the maintenance that we that, that the maintenance only costs three thousand, let's say all all the other stuff added in, that could potentially be a thousand dollars towards the interest on the the loan, right? I would feel weird about charging them money that would pay for the principal of our building, yeah. but interest is one of the operating expenses of carrying a building, you know, in, in sort of well, I mean, and you've now. got to do worst case scenario, right? That you have no tenant. Yeah. 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 Um, and, well, and part of my going into this would be having some kind of long-term agreement with the senior center where they're committing to some period of time, you know, I wouldn't want to go in there and then, you know, some other great building in Deerfield opens up in two years and like, well, sorry about that, but we're actually going to, you know, yeah. I would like to have some kind of commitment, you know, at least a decade long kind of something. Um, so yeah, if you can crunch as many numbers as you can, yep. obviously we'd like to move as quickly as possible so we can get our ducks in a row, both for town meeting, but also in terms of being able to, you know, express interest and in, in not have the property sell between, before between now and then, um, you know. Um, along those lines, is it, does the select board have a preference as far as the term of a mortgage? Um, it just in that, yeah, if we go 30, it, it would be a lot lower per year per taxpayer, um, but we're paying it off over 30 years. So that's coming off the tax bill for 30 years. Yeah. Do we want to look at what a 10 year thing would look like so it comes off quicker? I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's hard for, no. for someone to get to those numbers, right? Yeah. A 10 year, a 20 year, a 30 year. And obviously, you take your tenure, you know, we all live in homes and deal with it. Maybe not a whole lot of maintenance and upkeep in 10 years, but once you start getting 20, 30 years, you're talking roofs and furnaces and parking lots and driveways and sidewalks and septic systems and, you know. Yep. 
So yeah, if we could get if, if you, you could get it paid off and then start getting that money that you were still paying into maintenance fund. <laughs> into a maintenance and upkeep and you know, when the septic goes, you've got the money to pay for it cash and you've got the money for the roof. Because it's another building, right, that just like our school and library and public safety complex and all these buildings, they're all, they're wonderful buildings, but they're not an $8,000 roof. And they're not a couple thousand dollars to have Window World come and pop in some new windows. They're, they're, they're a lot of money. So I think the sooner we can start building the maintenance fund of that building. So is it all right if I keep this on as a old business yes. item? Just I'll yeah. give updates and then yeah. you want. And we can yeah. keep touch base every week on this one's good. And then hopefully, you know, people will watch it and yeah. come back and next week or in a couple weeks hop on and, and ask their questions too. Well, I can say that obviously this is not indicative of everybody in Sunderland, but the Daily Hampshire Gazette did run a little story on the on the Senior South County Oversight Board's interest in it. Yeah. And the comment section in, on Facebook for that was glowing. A whole bunch of people both in town and in the other towns being like, oh, it's a wonderful building. We'd love to see that. I did not see anyone being like, that's a horrible idea. And I will vote against that. So as a very unscientific sampling um it does seem like there is at the very least some interest in that that site and having a senior center in town and having a senior center have a permanent location and all the other wonderful things yeah from the oversight um, meeting all everything i heard was all yeah. supportive yeah yeah you know, so at, at the very least the people who care about a senior center yeah. love the idea and those are the first people you need to convince of the problem like that is <laughs> the people who don't care about the senior center we'll worry about them when we get to People that don't big. care about it also get a tax increase. Though. <laughs> yep. So, so that'll the, be the next hurdle. They're a hard. Per, that's the hard group to convince, right? Yep. The people that don't care but are going to pay for it. Yep. So. But I think that's also why, if we do have a plan for the rest of the building going into that, like, hey, we have a plan for this site is dedicated for the recreation coordinator, and this this part of it is going to be for. Um, community center and this part is going to be for this or whatever that's going to be more of a broader broader appeal to the town saying not just this isn't just for seniors this is also a place where you can go to get your flu shot and not have to drive to CBS and, and University Drive or whatever it, you know it happens to be all right um, anything else before we move on from here I think we've probably talked enough about that yeah all right thank you for bringing it up um, very exciting all around Moving on to old business, we have select board updates. Uh, I do not have anything this week. Do you have anything, Crystal? Um, Thursday night, we meet the candidates for South County EMS chief job nice. interview. Hoping that gets us the next step closer to actually getting that position filled. Beautiful. Uh, only update I have is I'm still talking to MassDOT a little bit. Learned that we, well, I already knew, but we're not on their, what they call their priority map for trails. So the western side of UMass is, but from there to Triggerloaf is still not. So the goal now is to get us on the map and uh, keep working at that. Okay. Thank you for continuing to work on that. I appreciate it. All right. My only update is um, our new employee, Maureen Nichols, started today. Um, she has a desk on the first floor, so um, hopefully next time you come in here, say hi to her, please. Uh, she'll be around, and um, yeah, introduce yourself. We're what are her hours? Um, we have not completely okay. determined that, but I think it's probably 9 to 1 or 8 to 12-ish. Okay. Morning time. Just want to know when to stop in. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime, Crystal. That's it. Okay. Um, and then on the, we also have a correspondence on here for oh. the MBI Broadband Infrastructure Gap Networks Grant Program Letter of Support. Yes, uh, that was, sorry, thank you for reminding me. Um, got a request from Comcast. They are applying for the a middle mile grant. Um, and they will be connecting additional residents in Sunderland to Comcast Broadband. Wonderful. Yes. And they just need our 
They just wanted a letter of support okay. for their application. Okay. Um, and that that was something that they would want to be doing regardless of... Never mind. We do not have to write a letter of support. Okay. But it's a good yeah, idea to do so if we want to connect additional members of town. I think that... Uh, to me, it's it's supporting the members of town who would get connected more so than than supporting the grant application. I can see being somebody who doesn't currently have broadband in town finding out the select board didn't support that and being like, <laughs> "Wait, why?" <laughs> so yeah, um, you want a vote on that? Yeah. Okay. So at this time, I would uh, entertain a motion. Um, actually, any discussion before we? Nope. Okay. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to write a letter of support for the uh, Comcast Broadband Infrastructure Project. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, I think that is everything. Anyone have anything else before we call it a day? All I'm right. Good. At this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three nothing. All right, take us out at 716.